This week on Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are talking about our Beer Pass After Dark episode that you should definitely go back and listen to. We talk about Monkey Monk, we talk about Pilot Brewing, and we talk about Ravinia opening just around the corner from Maplewood. What did we do these last three weeks, Zoe? Do you, what'd you make it to? Yeah, because, you know, it's going to court clock out, boop, and it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I, I, how's, that, how's that beer? That's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And we are drowning our misses this week. It's yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it all comes together. We're drinking some Around the Bend beer. Uh, you know, they're over at District Brew Yards. Yeah, uh, two more breweries call that place home. Yeah, Burnt City and Bulldog. And that weekend, or this past weekend, was Quake Fest. They threw their biggest, well, they threw their first party, their first festival. Yeah. And we uh, dropped the ball. Yeah. Um, you know, we're in the outfield. Uh, Brad's like, I got it. I got it. I'm like, no, no, I got it. And then uh, you're blinded by the sun and the ball drops. I know. We I got feel nothing. bad. It looked pretty darn cool. Mm-hmm. I saw it looks like it was all outside. Yeah. We were wondering if it was going to be taps, pour your own kind of thing. So yeah. that's all we could say. Just it sucks we missed it. <laughs> like, really, right? I, I don't know. It looked good. Yeah. We screwed up. It happens, man. Um, so we got this October fiesta here. Yeah, so to, around uh, the bend, you know, they're, they're there, so we're still talking about it. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a Marzen with uh, Basia Chili and Episode. Mm-hmm. I think Episode is like, a, uh, like an herb that they use with, like, you know, beans or something. Okay, in, in some, some of the dishes. In some of the dishes, yeah. Okay, makes sense. Uh, this is pretty solid. Oktoberfest. Everyone is releasing their Oktoberfest this in the next like two to three week period. Or every party, everyone should have a photo on Instagram with them yeah. at the Stein kind of thing going on. Right. And this is like chili flavor, like not really chili heat, just a little chili flavor. Yeah, there is something where Oktoberfest are often more very malty. This has like a little something. I think that chili is giving it a little, like, something that's cutting through the malt a little more. Yeah, it's not as, um, what do you call it? A sweet's an overused Caramel-y. term. Caramely. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that. Chewy. Like, it's not as chewy as some of them. But it's it's solid. Like, I only have this kind of beer around this time of year. Because that's usually the only time anyone makes it. Uh, so. Yeah. More, yeah, more toasty than okay. than caramel sweet yeah yeah a little bit of that yeah i'm always i'm fine with oktoberfest i don't not loving them but um you know yeah they're they're, they're okay yeah. you know definitely not my fave you know um i uh, what was it? we were talking about and uh what did we say oh well, i was saying that um uh urban chestnut uh, I enjoyed that one okay, quite yeah. a bit. I'm actually down for the hang on giving everybody's Oktoberfest a spin. Even like that new place, Roebuck, that opened. Yeah. They had an Oktoberfest in the tanks that we tried. I really enjoyed that. I mean, yeah, you know, you get exhausted. First thing you go to, like if you're, you know, f- fresh out the car after work, is you're going for a pale, you're going for an IPA. Yeah. That just that return of those warm, nutty notes is 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 welcoming for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't need more than one though. No, and it, but it's kind of perfect that it gets a little colder. Like right now, like last year was really hot, or today it's kind of yeah. hot. But when it's just chilly enough that you have a hoodie on and you got a Stein of Oktoberfest, yeah, that's it. I feel, I feel that. We'll go with that. So yeah, we'll keep drinking this. We got a few Oktoberfest to mention coming up uh, in the events, and I think uh, Oktoberfest over at Metropolitan's already on too. An important so. note about Oktoberfest: it, if you know, it's not for the month of October. Right, it's the end of September, <laughs> leading into October. That's Octoberfest. Yeah. Fest. yeah. Oh. Um, right but on. this one celebrates the Day of the Dead too, like the Mexican holiday. Oh. Uh-huh. You know, Coco, movie Coco. You got me. Oh, let's see. Yeah, th- the uh, it's like I, I am the worst person to explain what this is, but you're celebrating <laughs> your family that is no longer there, right? Okay. In the 
But that's what the a Vida del Marte or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's pretty cool. It's like a double, double themed beer here. Very cool. All right. So we talked about the beer. We talked about our miss. Let's talk about what we actually did. Because mm-hmm. uh, we kind of got after it. If you haven't listened to our hour long drunken rambles, <laughs> we did that. Yeah, man. Uh, we've been talking about Beer Pass After Dark ever since I think maybe like Jonathan Cutler came on a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was fun to actually like see it happen, you know, because there's so much stuff like, you know, after, you know, the juices are flowing because we record the app and then we, we do like a post app, right? Featuring a beer. Yeah. And then like the, the, ch- the chatter after that is always like, fuck, we should have kept the, uh, we should have kept it rolling. And the juice was definitely flowing <laughs> last Tuesday because we were drinking a 13. Yeah, like some eleven to thirteen. Yeah, something like that. Phase three beers. Yeah, I think we had juice, juice, juice. It was uh, yeah, and it was sprinkled in. I think the the whole point was, hey, I need a reason to open this Courage or Batch two. Okay. And it's like all right, <laughs> and also like drink all these other beers before. So it was part science project, part tasting, because you knew that a haze that came out in April was a shell of itself by September. So, mm-hmm. but you know, just to see them all lined up like that. Very indulgent on our part. Um, it was pretty cool. Yeah. I had fun though. <laughs> yeah, I was I was feeling good afterwards. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you yeah go back and listen to that, let us know if you like that too. Like just hit us up on Twitter or leave a comment. I don't know. Just let us know because we could do more of them. Maybe, thinking maybe like once a month. That's a good idea. Throw That's those a good out idea. there. Yeah, uh, Twitter After Dark is probably going to always have a theme. Beer Pass After Dark. Oh, I keep calling Twitter. it Twitter After Dark. <laughs> Even though the show, I kept calling it that. Beer Pass After Dark is going to have a theme. We're probably going to stray from it. Yeah. Yeah, and just a chance to just fit in all the stuff that we always want to discuss. Yeah. But if you really hate that, if people are listening, they're like, screw these guys. Like, fuck these guys, yeah. I was saying earlier, man, I need to get, I need to catch and shoot. I can't keep dribbling. Because <laughs> I'll get into a point that I'm trying to make, and then I'm like, blah, 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 blah. I need to make the point, and then, you know. Get the ball from Brad, make the point, and then go. Yeah. So, so that's my own self assessment okay. of uh, <laughs> but it beer pads after dark. It was a cool episode, and it was a good way to, like, I don't know, just keep the week rolling, too. Yeah. And the phase three thing was important because it's nothing like we've seen before, like in the, um, like in the burbs, where somebody leaves and goes to a third brewery, and everybody who loves him follows him there. Yeah. Like, yeah, since it's, it's insanity. He's making a collab with Goose. You know, I think they were the only beer outside of uh, the Virtue family that was ever tapped at Fulton. Okay. Was a phase three beer, you know? So, very strange phenomenon. So, I'm glad we got to tackle that, tackle him as as the subject. Okay. Not taco it. Not taco it. Yeah. This, uh, you know, Mexican Oktoberfest, tacos on your mind. This would actually pair very well with that. I know. I think it says on the back, pairs well with tacos, soft pretzels, pizza, basically food. <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoy how they keep it light. Even with Vera. Vera is what the um, the pistachio beer. It's not over the top with pistachio flavor. It's mm-hmm. meant to accompany something else. Yeah. And, you know, Dan's Dan's doing all right with that. With that. With that. Because that's his thing. Because, you know, those uh, who is it? Who's the other crew? Bulldog. Bulldog. Burn City. Uh, Burn City. And their beers are full throttle. Like, what was that? One of the pink can, the Narwhal Picnic? Yeah. Full throttle. Like, that was, over. That was, good. that was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, he's got, they all have different approaches. So, they, they, they play off each other nice. Yeah, definitely. It's cool. Uh, but speaking of tacos, then the next day, Wednesday, Ravinia. Man. No tacos, but. No tacos. They, they will have tacos. Uh, Bears opening night. Uh, block party. Yeah. Block party at the space. They are opening a block from the Maple Room. Right. So I. This is some funny shit still. It cracks me up. Yeah. So I, the party kicked off at 630. They were like tweeting us that they were like, we get partying early. I rode my bike over there. I got over there like 530. Yeah. And there wasn't much happening. I was okay. like, uh, I guess. I, so I went to the Maple Stop Room. Stop misleading me. I went and I was like, okay, I'm going to grab a beer at the Maple Room. Yeah. Uh, ended up with one of the, I don't know, juice, juice, juice pa- pants? pants. Yeah, juice pants. Something about pants or juice. Yeah. yeah. Was, <laughs> I was juicing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was tasty. I just hung out there a little bit until the Ravinia party kicked off. But you went over to Rav- Maple Room afterwards, right? Uh, I started to. Oh. 
okay, fair enough. I went that. I went in that direction. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, you know what, man? I'm, I'm not doing this. But these are one two stops now. Yeah. Ravinia is opening, or they may be brewing there right now. You know what's funny is that they it was a brewery, right? In fact, around the bend used to brew there. And so did Arcade, rest <laughs> in peace, uh, El Syndicate. Oh man, it all, this is the perfect beer for this episode. <laughs> I wore my El Syndicate shirt today at the gym, man. Oh, nice. I still love the font on that with the it's cursive nice, writing. Yeah. It's cool. Oh, so this was a brewery. Um, so there was brewing equipment there. So then they moved all that brewing equipment out, <laughs> right? right. Well, they sold. They sold it all. Yeah. And put in their own equipment. Oh, you boys are nuts. So, um, Brewing Design Solutions, that's the name of their crew. Yeah. Right? This and Australian dude owns this, and he does it in China. It's, yeah. And then, <laughs> shout out to this dude, because he's like, yeah, I used to watch the podcast in China. You remember he said yeah, that? Yeah, he's like, you look familiar. <laughs> Did you have another podcast? I was like, yeah, the podcast. Like, I used to watch it. I used to watch that in China. So, the, uh, so the I was riding my kangaroo to work. <laughs> This is such a strange story. So then, you know, um, I had a great time yeah. like uh, with the uh, Ravinia guys. So if I got this right, they both, the one, the one guy who does the recipes, right, he lives in Australia, but the Ravinia guys live up in Highland Park. Yeah. And um, one of those guys used to live in Australia, and right. that's when they met. Right. Their or kid, China. Their, in Australia, because their kids went to the same school. Yeah. There was a lot of there was a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving parts, right? Um, yeah. Oh, but up in it's up in uh, up in Highland Park, the two Ravinia guys apparently are neighbors with the guy who they're leasing from at the current space. Right. Remember that story? That's yeah. <laughs> I'm like you can't, you know, you can't make this stuff small up. Small world kind of stuff. Yeah, it was cool. So we we got to hang out with the three Ravinia partners. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, just take the take the space for a spin. You know, just see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was fun. And uh, Coyote Logistics is the building next door. So in between the brew house and the building is like a parking, parking lot, lot. Yeah. that they used for this block party. Yeah. So and they can have was it six parties a year? Yeah. So uh, probably, and they could also do more too if they you know work that out. Yeah. Uh, but we're uh, we're definitely gonna go there. And record like an episode as they get rolling here and, yeah. you know, find out more about this kind of get all of our facts right about Ravinia. And, and yeah, we've, we've made up a lot of stuff. And we, you know, <laughs> right. You just you just roll with whatever you thought you heard. <laughs> but one thing is interesting, though, like, you know, Ravinia, you know, they were kind of tried brewing at Finch. And you hear this with, uh, with you know, Sketchbook and even with... Uh, with Maple Room, yeah, you know, like folks that are contract brewing are really deciding to take ownership over that that part of their business and say, "Hey, listen, man, you know, we're just gonna we're just gonna do it all ourselves." Right. You know, we, we're more interested in that. Not that we can't trust you, but we just want more control over what we're doing. Yeah. So. And but he said they still have tanks at Finch, right? And no, they, no, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. And then they have a tank at 350. <laughs> Like, okay. In the, in the 350s <laughs> new space that they haven't really started brewing at, that they did their October party. The punk, smash, Punktoberfest? Yeah, their smash barley wine, pumpkin beer. That's thing. good. I'd like to try that. Last year, it was good. Yeah, you, maybe I'll roll out there again. I don't know. I just went <laughs> randomly. They, um, yeah, because 350s, uh, their brewery's in a strip mall. But yeah, they got this production facility. So when you go to the Ravinia space, there's what? Um, I think a twenty a twenty barrel system, and then two side two fermenters like twenties and forties on the fermenter side. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, we got some sixties over at uh, three fifty. Yeah, so they 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 aren't playing. They're not fucking around. So they're gonna have a ton of beer for themselves, and then they might even have capacity to do what Finch was doing for them. It yeah, like. so either brew someone else's beer or work with or have have other people come into what Ale Syndicate was doing in the first place and like do it right. Yeah. So. Yeah, and there was a story about the Ale Syndicate equipment. Uh, it, it, just, it just wasn't satisfactory for them. Yeah. Um, so. And it had been sitting for years. Also, so, the, yeah. also that. Probably wasn't in good shape. Yeah, so this is at a train station, right? Yeah. This was cool. This was a collaboration with uh, Arbor. Which is a uh, restaurant and a catering company. Yeah, I had never heard of um, the building where Coyote Logistics sits. So look, Coyote Logistics is apparently like 
you know, this transportation management company and they got all these millennials, you know, they're 22 year olds that all love beer. So this is perfect because that building sits in between two breweries now. That's pretty good. Yeah. And um, yeah. And all those engineers over there coming over and just kind of admiring this building that used to be a train station that is, used to be like, a, you know, like a, some kind of manufacturing plant. And now it's a brewery. Yeah. And then they will have a tap room. They will have tacos. They'll probably have other things. I would request that they... Bigger kitchen. Bigger kitchen. I would request that the music is a little quieter than the Maple Room. Just, you know, a, just a little bit. Uh, like, <laughs> you know, we're old, man. You know? I, like that block, I like that block party aspect, though. Because cool. there was, a, you know, there was a, there was beer trucks, and then there's, a, you know, then there's food trucks, mm -hmm. and then there's TVs everywhere. There's a DJ. DJ wasn't too happy when the Bears were playing. We're like, dude, Bears are 100 years old. You know, turn, that, turn your music down. Yeah. And a, B, he's we like, don't know you. I'm a DJ. He's like, here DJ. <laughs> he's like, listen. And you can see him like using his hands. He's like, no, no, no. And so they turned it down to play the Bears game. Like, I mean, come on, what are you, what are you gonna do? You're yeah. in Chicago, right? It was opening day. Right? Yeah. Oh, this building, um, that Coyote Logistics sits in is a Chicago landmark, man. The Green Exchange. Yeah. Oh, I know. So apparently, um, it's an industrial building, um, that exemplifies the importance of the industry. The you know. And then also, um, prior to the Green Exchange moving in there, it was home to uh, a Swiss underwear company. Okay. Yeah. They made suits and uh, women's underpants. And now they're on the Chicago landmark list for uh, National oh. Historic Places. Brand. Sure. <laughs> but it was uh, the building's distinctive tower. Uh, then they got a they got a water tank and they did a good job of hiding the water tank with a tower. Oh, okay. So that's really like the architectural reason why they're there. Okay. But that's what the building was from 1913 to 1924. Yeah, I'm interested to see how uh, Ravinia handles this patio situation that they're talking about putting it on the train line. There's like a platform up there because it was an old train station. And I remember this, yeah. Because like right now, when you when you're showing you the space, it's like the tap room's going to be here. And then you just look up, and it's just a wall. Yeah, it's like, but, there'll be stairs. Like, what? <laughs> there'll be stairs, and there'll be a, a patio. I'm very curious to see what they do with the space. I'm excited that it was a brewery, and it's still a brewery. I'm glad it's not TJ Fridays. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it's not fucking condos. It's, still, your, a, it's still a brewery. It's still a brewery. brewery, yeah. And that's cool. Hopefully it's not a cursed brewery now, like Break Room. That's a thing. <laughs> that is for sure a thing. Um, it was fantastic uh, catching up with those guys. Yeah, so that was a good uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, then uh, I think we had to take it easy. Yeah, man. Um, what else did you end up hitting up? Oh, man, uh, I went trapping. Trapping? I went trapping. I went to the mouse trap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, man. I was like, dude, I just happened to be in like, you know. Like, oh, that was before the Ravinia. That was my, my pregame before Ravinia. Nice. Yeah. So it's like, um, you know, I didn't realize this, but there's like 1.3 miles or so. Where Goose Clyborn, the Mouse Trap, and Peace. So you with less than two miles, you could hit all three. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, I like the space. There is not an IPA to be found, but they have an IPA inspired cocktail. Okay. Which I dig. And then um, you know, it's a it's a it's an interesting location. You know, it's not something. It's not a space you would usually go. No. There's like you know, there's like VIPs down the street. There's a Whole Foods. Yeah, just, I think the IP is closed. It, they, they changed it. Now it's like a... Uh, oh, they changed the name, right? Yeah, now it's uh, like someone's... It's like Rico's Cabaret or some shit. Uh, oh, this is still the IPs. I don't know what you're whole, whole, Amazon was like, <laughs> how much do we got to give you to change this name? <laughs> like, it doesn't look good. Yeah. Next to our Whole Foods. You know, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> so I went to the trap, man. Um, yeah, I dug this thing called Fox in the Snow. It's a... Uh, uh, wine barrel Lays creek it's actually fooder barrel Lays creek mm. with uh with cherries with two types of cherries you know and um, that was great but then i just took a spin on all their like experimental like experimental like uh you know it's like belgian ales and and ha and wheat ales and hmm. you know these these beers have like like flight or are you going i'm just like hey let me i'll try that uh, okay, i'll try that because i ran into uh, alex miramontes we had him on the show once and then you, we, I think it was for like a uh, great taste episode. Oh, okay. So he's he's working there now. Oh, cool. You know, so you know, we just tried a few beers. You know, I uh, just want to talk about a few of them, man. Yeah. Good listeners, uh, this is a farmhouse ale with uh, Rowley Farmhouse. So it's a a beer de miel, a beer de miel. It's a, it's got cactus and honey in it, and it's you know, and the 
characteristic is a long, slow fermentation. Okay. So these beers are doing a lot of moves. Like they smell one way, they finish a different way, and then they, you know, they taste the, the third way. Huh. Right. And they're just, they're just, they're interesting. You know. Yeah. Uh, Miscellanea is the wild ale that took yeast from these crews: Chester King Side Project, Central State, and Allagash. Took the house yeast from all of those, blended them together, and made an experimental like wit ale essentially. Okay, a yeah. super super virus beer. <laughs> <laughs> the super bug beer. Yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah, and they got over thirty bottles to go at the Mouse Trap. Mm-hmm. I think Barrel Aged Dino Smores had that. You know. Yeah, they they're like little merch and bottle shop areas. Pretty pretty on point. Yeah, you know you get some you get some strange flavors. In there, and then like you know the, the the crew can't wait to talk to you about like how this batch is different from the last batch, and mm-hmm. you know what they taste versus what you taste. Like it's an interesting ride. Like there's no IPAs, but then they ride all these different flavors in their wild ale category. Yeah, yeah. The couple times I've gone in there for I don't know different things, I'm always like, I'm here for this, but I kind of want to see what this is. Yeah, and I think that's maybe what brings people back all the time. Like it's a it's a different crowd that goes there versus Maple Room. Yeah. But you just like I don't know what I'm trying, and I want to try it again, or I want to try the other one. It so. reminded me a lot. Like I went to Gesture King once down in um in Texas, like just outside of Austin, and you know when when you go on the tour, the first thing I'll tell you is like you know these beers were kind of meant to be enjoyed in this location, you know, because they they essentially have like you know these rolling hills. They got this fucking estate, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like you know this is a representation of the the place we're at. So like. Like if you go to, I went to Great Taste and I tried some of these beers and it was out of context, you know, like I didn't understand what I was doing. So I'm just like, well, fuck it, I'm going to get Camel Toe from Peace, right? Yeah. Oh, they had Camel Toe? <laughs> yeah, they had Great Camel Toe and Great Taste. Oh, nice. But then when you have them there, it's a whole different experience. I think then I noticed that about the Mousetrap, like, you know, because like you said, there's so many beers, like there's 30 beers to go and all of them have these these names and they, they're all such small runs. You don't really know. You don't really know what's going on. So having them there... Made me appreciate the whole setup more. Yeah, they need to be the off color beers need to be treated treated more like a wine. Like yeah. you are sitting down either to think about this. It's not a it's not like maybe rose is kinda of like the beer of wine, kinda of like we're just crushing this. These are like I wanna think about this, I wanna see how this year is different, how this batch is different. What'd you guys do? It was yeah. you think about it more. I didn't understand that, any of that at all until I went there. I hadn't been there in like a year, so, yeah. so, so that was cool. I think that's one reason why I don't to pick up the beers to have at home because yeah. they are very unique beers, and yeah. it's awesome. But it's maybe not what I want to have when I'm like just working at home or like watching TV or like. It definitely doesn't fit like the fridge beer category. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, and that's another reason why they changed their format too. I think. So like the Fox in the Snow was like a you know three hundred seventy five milliliter bottle. So it's not quite it might be a little more at least a little more than a twelve ounce bottle, but some were like seven fifties. Yeah. You know, they have these and they had their four packs are like two fifties. Right. Two fifty four packs, two fifty two packs. You know, because they're like, hey, they're going through the same thing. They're like, hey, you don't know what's going on. Try a little bit of it. Try right. this little ass bottle. It's and cute little twelve dollar bottle. Try that and then come we back. We don't want you to think of us like you might think of this beer. Mm-hmm. Think of us differently. Look at it. When you see us in the fridge, if you pick this up, do it different. Yeah. And so I think that's smart. I like I liked the angle. Mm-hmm. I like the angle. Yeah. Because, like, you know, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. going to be another brewery that puts out IPAs all the time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or just do something a little more fun. That's cool. Yeah. So cheers to those guys, man. Mouse trap. trap. Nice. Trap, 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 trap. trap. Uh, the, over the weekend, I was with my family. And we went to Lunky, Lucky Monk. Lunky. Lunky. <laughs> Lunky Monk. Right on. So you're in Barrington, Illinois. Right. Hello. So you were, we were talking last week. One of them closed. Uh, I went, well, man, okay. Barrington? No, one of the Lucky Monks, right? I didn't know there was more than one. Oh, I thought you said, what closed? Uh, Something closed. Was it not a monk? Uh, was it monk? I don't know. Fuck. Last week? I thought so. God, I'm getting, I don't know, man. I'm drawing a blank, man. Something and I was closed. like, not the one here. <laughs> Cause I'm going there. Not the not the lucky one. The lucky one didn't close, man. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I thought somebody had another location that closed. We we touched on it last week. Oh yeah, in Plainfield. Yeah. 
Who was that? Nevins. Wasn't it Nevins? Oh, was it Nevins? I think so. Nevins and playing for but the Nevins didn't have another location, did they? They had, um, they, oh, Midnight Pig. Oh, Midnight Pig. It used to be called Nevins. And the one in Evanston, it was in a steakhouse uh, event space. So the steakhouse closed, so their satellite tap room closed. Oh, okay. But the yeah. one in Evanston, did no, that? No, the, that's the Evanston one. That's the Evanston one. one. But oh, they, okay. they're from Plainfield. Oh, okay. So I don't know what the deal is in Plainfield, but Evanston for sure closed. Oh, I never made it there. You always liked that spot. Too. Yeah, 26 years, man. Uh, I, it's, and, it's, weird, it's weird going to Evanston because, like, you know, even if you live in Myers Park, Evanston's across the street. But you still don't want to go across it. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to leave town. Uh, <laughs> this is weird. Anyway, so Lucky Monk <laughs> didn't close. No, okay. up in uh, Bear, they're one of the older. They're one of the older crews. Yeah. So, uh, you have a you have a glass from them, right? Like one of the little pint glasses. Like, I don't know why you're doing this to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I never. Cool, it's a cool little glass. I ain't never been to Jolly. I've been. You got me to Jolly. You got me the Jolly Monk. Yeah. And he was from. The Belgian. Oh, uh, okay. I thought you have this little glass. I always think of you when I see this glass. Yeah, because that's the jolly. <laughs> that's the jolly monk from the Belgian. Yeah, I should have brought your glass. For the Sorry. Trappist I thought brewery. you had one. I my, got... my uncle has one, but he obtained this illegally. Oh my god! Yeah. Years ago, not not this time. He borrowed it. Yeah, without... He borrowed it. He'll bring it back someday. <laughs> right. Just borrow. Anyway. He'll bring it back. All right, I'm off off the rails here. <laughs> anyway, so that lucky monk. Yeah. Uh, I I went there the time last year around this time, so this is like, you know, revisiting one year later. Yeah. Uh, I decided to go with the flight this time because I was like, oh, I just, you know, it's an interesting picture for Instagram where we could just put one beer up, but do a flight. And they were out of like half their beers. <laughs> for their Pilsner, they gave me uh, a liney. Get out of here. And then for one of their other beers, they gave me a Noon Whistle beer. Come on. How you had a beer? <laughs> uh, this is, they make the beer here, right? Am I missing something? Yeah, they make the beer there. I'm about to find out who that Jolly uh, Monk is, too, by the way. So, I, you, a person who was taking my order really should have warned me, like, hey, we have, I think it was six beers in this flight. Mm -hmm. Two of them are not going to be ours. Do you still want this flight? I probably would have turned it down. What the fuck, Brad? I, I don't, but that noon whistle beer was real good. Like that was the that was the standout of the flight. At, <laughs> at, uh, Lucky, Monk. at Lucky Monk. Yeah. Uh, my uncle even he ordered whatever beer that was supposed to be whatever was replacing the noon whistle beer. He ordered that one, and they're like, "Oh, we don't have that." It's going to be this. And I think it was the Cosmo Pale Ale. I want to know more about, like, breweries not having their own beer. Like, right? Because, like, all right. You, if you're out of beer, I get you're kind of like a restaurant there. But if you're out of beer, don't have a flight. St. Ben, uh, Bernard's. St. Bernard's, yeah. That's the, that's the lucky. That's the, the monk, monk I was yeah. thinking of, yeah. Don't have a flight. Like, Tell me, you're out of your beer. Yeah, we'll either give you a half flight. Don't. You're selling me other people's beer. I came here to hey, try flight, your the, beer. The flight ain't an option. Hey, we got this twofer, you know, or whatever you call yeah, it. Yeah, like we can give you a taste of a couple of them, yeah. but we're out of like, we're out of them right now. Just stand on it. We sold so much beer, we've been crushing it. We can't have this right now. That's better than Brad lives 40 miles from here and all he remembers is someone else's beer. Yeah, and that we, noon whistle reminded me like I should go to noon whistle. Again. We we were killing it so we were killing it, <laughs> crushing it so hard that we're out of our own beer. That's a better takeaway. Yeah, and definitely don't give me a line and Kugel as your other option. Like noon whistle, fine. It's another suburban brewery. You give me line and like just get, you should get, boy. You're gonna give me Miller Light if you didn't have line and Google. <laughs> like what was the point of this? At what point does, does this does this hill stop? Yeah, <laughs> we're going down this hill. Okay, what's next? What are you gonna do? Give me. <laughs> I got nothing, man. I was I was very confused by the flight. So the picture that's on Instagram, only some of those beers are monkey, lucky monks, <laughs> monkey, <laughs> monkey monks, monkey lunks. You know, and I tell you something, man. Uh, Barrington, um, you know, one of the top ten zip codes in the country. 
top ten wealthiest zip codes oh, really? in the country is Barrington, Illinois. So it's like Barrington, Highland Park. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and then all the rest of them are like in New York, right? <laughs> right? Like those three, and then like a bunch of East Coast zip codes. Oh, but like, dude, there's three breweries in fucking Barrington. There's Wild Onion, been around since the '90s. There's fucking Flesh, the Flesh Boys. They're up in Barrington. Oh, right. And then there's Lucky Monk, who was there before Flesk. So. I mean, it's ain't a town that's like new to the like, the concept of a brew pub, mm-hmm. even. But the, I remember the Flesh guys were saying like, you know, up here you kind of have to have you have to have you have to be restaurant focused in order to really just you know really make some headway. You got to be restaurant focused. Makes sense. But dude, there's been breweries up in in this joint since the '90s. So what is that that right there? That's not that's not a that's not a route you take, man. You simply do not take that route. Yeah, like it's cool that you were out of beer. Like, good for you. If I went to Peace and they were out of beer, I'd be like, "What are you guys doing?" Eighty six. Like, Put eighty six next to it. Keep it moving. Yeah. I don't know. So it was weird. Like I, I only go to Lunky Monk. Lucky Monk. Oh, we only go to Monkey Lunk. Uh, when I'm over at like the Arlington Horse Track. Oh, right. There. So we were we were hanging out there uh, with family. So how's the space? How's uh, Lucky? I never been to Lucky Monk. It looks like a rock bottom yeah. inside. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's food's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, they got good burgers and stuff. So it's like nothing, nothing wrong with this. And the beers are the beers are fine. One of my favorite parties was the uh, ninth annual Barrington Ale Fest. You get right off the train, the same one that goes past it, uh, that race track. Oh, okay. Uh, and they, it was a party. It was a party and a half at the train station. Fantastic time. Nice. They yeah. got a cool uh, cigar beer dinner thing happening or something. I saw when I was there, it was kind of, it was like, I don't know, 50 bucks or $45. Cigar yeah. beer pairing thing. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Something different. Yeah. Yeah, when you're up there, you got to take care of like, you know, the retired little old ladies that come in. And you know, and the kids and everybody in between. So beer right. sounds like beer might be getting lost in the shuffle a little bit, even though it's technically a brew pub. Yeah, beer's getting lost in the shuffle. Yeah, but so, so but yeah, you could honestly. I've been there twice now, mm-hmm. so I'm probably good. But you could put rock bottom on the front of that. Nobody. They would blink. Who, it wouldn't no blink. No one coming there would be like, oh, because right. across the street, I think it's Gino's, or it's either Giordano's mm-hmm. or Gino's East. I like Gino's East. So. You're either pizza or burgers. That's what you have. Brad coming in spicy uh, uh, from his from his uh, this chili <laughs> <laughs> from his Barrington Illinois trip. Oh man! All right. Um, so that's uh, what that's what caused me to miss Quake Fest. Okay. So hang out with family. I can dig it. Yeah. Uh, and then you went to one of the new breweries, right? It was the spot we were talking about. I ended up at a pilot project. You know, I'm in the cab, and you know. You know, I got my head down the whole way, you know, dicking around on my phone. I look up, I see the Congress Theater, and she stops, and I look straight ahead, and I'm like, oh, shit, we're here. Let me out. <laughs> oh, wait, you were going there? Right. It's across the street from the Congress Theater, okay. which I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. So, okay. So that's cool. Um, so this is where uh, homebrewers and entrepreneurs go mm-hmm. to. Uh, open their own space. Okay. Right? Is that bike place still next? Is that like next door? I then? think this was the uh, this was the pawn shop. I think. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's right next to uh, next door. I believe is Las Comales, that taco joint with the little bitty street tacos. Oh, I never been there. There's that. an empty lot across the street. Yeah. So yeah. this is uh so this is just past Armitage. If you're on Milwaukee. Just north of Armitage. Oh, okay. I got to go there. That's super close. It, yeah, it is to me. surprisingly convenient. I had no we were idea. right was there, there when we were at Rev a few nights ago. We should have just walked down the street. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't really yeah it's like that. literally like a, there's a, a, a light away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, pilot project. So apparently it's a uh, it's a thing where there's four, uh, four breweries in one and then – one of the one of the partners was really into coffee, so there's a coffee program, and then there's a breakfast program where they're doing like um, waffles and you know uh, charcuterie and uh, oh breakfast yeah and then like uh, <laughs> uh, dry hopped eggs, so they got like uh, deviled eggs that are like sprinkled with like hops uh, hot powder hop, hop dust yeah so um, uh-huh. let's let's run through the four breweries so it's a crew I imagine this would rotate but the, the crews that are in there now are uh, tethered vines. 
uh, Odious Cellars, which is a uh, sour wild ale program. Um, Luna Bay Booch, which is a kombucha crew okay. run by some ladies. And then uh, Orkan Noy, which is a uh, Belgian, uh, Norwegian inspired brew house. Oh, and they were at Quike Fest, this crew. Actually, because you know how they put the line through oh, the O in oh, yeah. some of those Norwegian things. That, uh... So it was like that. Yeah. So when you walk in this joint, it's very clean, very beautiful space. It it could be, you know, it could be a shared workspace. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be an event center. Like it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's a very versatile feeling. You know, like when you walk into the Maple Room, it is a lounge, right? It is a lounge distillery. This is a more like versatile space. Like you don't, it doesn't really have... I wouldn't say it has a lot of identity. Like it's no different from like I was saying. Like if maybe if this if the Middle Brow and Hopewell and right, right. and Pilot Project all came out and it was all the same crew, like it wouldn't surprise me at all. Okay, because it's got that feel. Yeah, I haven't been to Middle Brow yet, but we Hopewell. went to we went to. No, we tried. Oh uh, yeah, we tried. We ended up at fucking Parsons. Yeah, I got the burgers, the chicken joint. I got the fucking burgers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Oh, but you know, it looks good. And I don't know much about it other than that, so I'd like to go back and know more. But we had the we had a beer at uh, up not up person down it's Fresh Fest. Uh, no, Ultra Fresh. Ultra Fresh. <laughs> Ultra Fresh. Oh man. Oh, oh, Fresh Fest was in Pittsburgh. Oh, Fresh. <laughs> no, I was like up <laughs> fresh, up, <laughs> fresh or down. Ultra Fresh. <sighs> we had a pilot. I want to say that the house. Uh, no, the, no, the, 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 uh, the hot review beer, the welcome beer, I want to say pilot project brewed it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So when you go there is you said these four breweries, but one of them's not pilot project. Right. So I had what I believe is the house, uh, double IPA. Okay. So from you, pilot. From pilot. So when you look at the menu, there is a head brewer for a pilot. And then when you look at the menu, it's broken up by crew. Okay. So Tether Wines actually sounds the most interesting because it's like, hey, we're making products that are hybrids of beer and wine. Oh, that's cool. Right, okay. like dry hop wines. You see that a lot on the West Coast. They're taking they're taking wine, they're putting it in a um, in a in a bright tank, and they're loading it up with fucking hops or cannabis or you know they're infusing wines. Oh, I haven't even seen this that. This kind of sounds like that, mm-hmm. right? So, I'm very curious. Yeah, the space is nice. It's dog friendly. It's uh, it's kid friendly. There's a beer garden. And, um, okay. Yeah. The, the place looks great. So you had the double IPA, which like the picture had the pilot glass on it. If you were to get one of the other beers, were they other branded or were they? Yeah, they were branded and it would have made sense to take a picture of the actual, uh, menu. Cause sometimes I do that for like, just to reference it, not to actually take it. But here yeah. it made sense cause each crew was listed on the menu. Okay. So and where, what, and what they were pouring too. So where like district brew yards, it's kind of all branded district brew yards and if you get a glass, it says District Brew Yards, even if you're drinking around the bend. But there, if you got a Luna by the Brook, <laughs> book? Luna Luna Bay Booch, <laughs> yeah. which is the kombucha crew. They would have their logo on it. I and don't think so. Glass, it would say uh, Pilot? I would say Pilot. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it would say Pilot. Because it, it sounds like um, this is a, a place where people come just to get things rolling, and then they go do their own thing. So like, uh, cheers to Hop Review, because Odia Sellers is going to start their own thing. Right, pretty soon in Logan, because you know when we put the post up, we're like, how many brews in Logan? I counted six, and they're really seven because I left out Maple, uh, and I'm left out uh, Middle Brow. I left out Middle Brow. Yeah, yeah. You got so, called out on that. Yeah, which is good. This yeah. is why. I, which is why I'm like, hey, what's, what am I doing? Um, so let's see if I can remember this right. There's uh, seven crews in. This is insane. That Logan Square has more breweries in just about any. What I don't maybe maybe more than any, anything in the city, right? Because how many breweries are in fucking... Uh, the District Brew... Not the District Brew Yards, but the um, Chicago Brewing District. Right. So, so we got to say Chicago got, Brewing District. You got three with District Brew Yards, right? Yeah. You, then you have uh, Rise, All Rise, Great Central, Finch, Goose, uh, Up, Open... No, what's their name? The Sound One. <laughs> Why am I blanking on it? Oh, yeah. On tour. Yeah. And then you could include Forbidden Root. So you're, you're mashing up these neighborhoods, though. Because cause Chicago Brewing District is only just... Okay, so no Forbidden Root. No okay. Forbidden Root. No Forbidden Root. So what's that? Seven? Yeah. West Loop. Um, Ravenswood. Uh, Malt Row. 
Yeah, right? you got you got beguile, you got bone band of bohemium, you have urban renewal, dovetail, half acre is included in yes. that. And uh, you got to include spiteful if you're including half acre. Uh, but the spiteful included because they have the Lincoln one, or they include it because oh, they have. You're right. That. I, I, so I don't I, know. I, spiteful I, would be I, on the I, edge, I maybe. Yeah. You're right. And then you're talking. We're not even counting Hermosa, where Off Color and Pipeworks share a wall. Yeah. If you're talking, that's it. There's two there. Right. No one's in Hermosa. <laughs> yeah, but some people count consider Hermosa part of Logan because it's just a block away. That's because they're trying to get better. Right. So that's her most. So, so those guys are out. So in just Logan proper, we're talking um, Middlebrow, mm-hmm. this place, Pilot Project, uh, Ravinia, Maplewood, um, Rev, and uh, Hopewell, and Bishi. Oh, Bixi, yeah, Bishi. Uh. So we're talking seven in Logan proper with no other, like with nothing extended, just Logan Square. Damn. It's impressive because that's like what three, four miles north of downtown, northwest mm-hmm. of downtown. And then you're gonna have Salamoth, Salamoth, and Odious Cellars apparently, and Pipeworks. Pipeworks. Yeah. So and that puts you at ten if this shit's on pace. Damn, that's insane. I remember when there's ten Chicago breweries. <laughs> 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 so yeah, man, the uh, the power of uh, Hipster Highway in full effect at fucking uh, All Pilot right. Project. Well, yeah. yeah, I want to see what's. I want to see what this is about because I uh, is the kombucha just kombucha? Is a kombucha inspired beer sort of like I was one and done. I got a beer. Yeah, remember that beer Goose had? That was the kombucha beer. Floor. Floor. I do remember floor. But they like it kind of got out of hand. I think. I think the mother got too big. <laughs> yeah, I think like <laughs> it started to affect the other beers like and not on purpose. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? Fuck this kombucha. We're done. But floor was a was a moment. Yeah. Yeah, floor was nice. So I want to. I would like to know if these kombucha beers are like higher in alcohol than kombucha. I'd love to know like what Pilot is kind of getting out of this, or are they getting like a percentage in this company as they move forward? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Those stuff. shared workspaces are are more uninteresting. You know, there's rework or wherever. Loose Keys was at a shared space before. Yeah. We were. And then there's like this other place. Like I've seen a uh, a food incubator that was kind of like that, like right. on on the on near uh, Riot Fest. So these projects are very interesting to me. Uh, I'd like to know more. Yeah. So that's cool. Man, all right. That was a pretty solid week. Yeah, man. Even though we didn't make it to Quake Fest again. No. We are sorry, District Three Arts. Sucking at life here, Damn. right here on uh on on Beer Pass. Um, can I give one more uh just big up? Shout oh yeah, out for sure. Go to for um the Electric Jungle. This is a record shop in Rogers Park, just across the street from the metro station. It used to be Logan Hardware. The uh, It was an arcade that sat across the street from Quinchers at Fullerton and Western. So yeah. they landed in Rogers Park, and they celebrated their unofficial one-year anniversary up there. That's cool. So it's always a bottle share. It's always music playing. And it's really like, uh, so the Half Acre guys were there, and uh, Illuminated Brew Works. They, okay. they, I don't know what the connection is, but every time I go... There's like this assortment of Illuminated Brew Works uh, beers. That's cool. So yeah. I have myself a good old time, and I'm reminded that Illuminate is like really making some good stuff. They um they contract brew out of Church Street now. Oh right, okay. Because they were near that brewing district, and now they're looking to relocate to the north, far north side, past northwest, past uh, Jefferson Park, Norwood Park. They said they're looking to lo- locate up there because there's nothing there. Okay. So you got the tip of the city is Jeff Park and Norwood Park, and after that it's Niles. Yeah. So this is like the last neighborhood northwest before you hit the burbs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Even past, like, yeah, over, not far, probably from Alarmist. And, uh, so it would be just, yeah. Yeah, like the Alarmist kind of shoots off in a little direction. Saganash. Saganash. And then that other one kind of just goes more west a little bit. Yeah. What you just said. Yeah. City's weird. It's got those weird edges at yeah, the, at there the is edge. Yeah, a weird Devon kind of edge that leads up. To, yeah, no, like because yeah. on on the south end, right? You can be on if you're on 79th and Cicero, you're not in Chicago. If you're on 87th and Cicero, you're in Chicago. Oh, it's okay. weird. The the edges aren't clean. It's yeah. in and out. All right. We're you we're doing all this pop locking and breaking <laughs> and shit <laughs> when we're describing yeah. these. Yeah, but yeah. Um, oh, but yeah. Cheers to them, man. I had a blast. One year anniversary party. A lot of illuminated there. That's awesome. Very awesome. Well, all right. 
Damn, are we doing the hour up again? <laughs> what the fuck, man? We got to chill with this shit, Brad. All right, so what's what's coming up this week? Let's roll it down. Let's get through it. All right, Malt Row. Uh, shout out to Beguile. They're doing Batch 663, Barrel Age Barley Wine on Friday. Seven year anniversary. For no them. kidding. Because we have, we have a bottle of Batch 500 mm-hmm. that was given to us, and we still have to crack open that... <sighs> That had to have been last year's, right? Or was it the year before? Uh, gotta go two years. I'm gonna go two years on two that. Two years. So we'll we might crack that open after this to kind of Woo! kick that off. So oh, yeah, Tuesdays, go over there. Man. I might I might pop in Friday and pick up a bottle. I'm a big fan of all the things Beguile. Yeah. Yeah. Fun crew. The artist formerly known as Argyle. Yeah. <laughs> Brewing company. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Oktoberfest season, so Pollyanna and Salamoth have parties coming up. Yeah, the Viking Oktoberfest at Salamoth, it's, I believe, $20 gets you in, and then all the beer is a la carte, so $20 kind of gets you in for the music, because they have, you know, it's Vikings, they're going to be metal. Ass fucked by Vikings. No, it's not, it's not called that. At all. No. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Friday the 13th, uh, Goose Island, uh, Clybourne, is celebrating that with... Uh, what are they celebrating? 2013 prop. We're going to get to that. Oh. Uh, 2013 prop and a Templeton Rye prop. Two, um, not prop. Templeton Rye BCS from 2013. How much goddamn Templeton Rye is there, man? What time is that at? Is That's that at like, noon. So it'll be gone. It'll be gone by the time normal folks uh, get off. Oh, Friday the 13th is significant at Goose because the brew pub opened on a Friday the 13th. And so did the production facility at Fulton open at Friday the 13th. And then that brew pub, the, uh, the tap room at Fulton that they wanted to, that they open, that they have now, um, was scheduled to open on Friday the 13th as well. But the city had this code where they, they claimed that their uh, ceiling wasn't fire retardant. So they need to come back in and spray the roof uh, with retardant. Yeah. And it's, it killed their momentum because the other two, Opening that day. We're on the 13th. So Friday the 13th is a big deal mm-hmm. over at uh, at the with the flock. It's the Clyde one. Are you going to try to hit this up? Um, I'm probably going to miss that on the way. Uh, uh, but if I go, I'm also going back to the trap and I'm going to peace because it's 1.4 and I'm going to walk it off. Okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah I kind of want to hit a Beguile on Friday. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm more likely to go to Beguile. Yeah. No. Uh, then Saturday is this hot dog event. At Half Acre. <laughs> Dude, uh, Vienna Beef. The Half Acre Vienna Beef Patio Party, man. That's 11 to 3 on a Saturday. Yeah, so I'm going to try to get there. There's going to be a special Half Acre merch, hot dog themed merch, I think. That's part of the draw. Yeah, that's... Part I kind of want to see what this hot dog <laughs> themed merch is. Part of the draw, not going to lie, <laughs> is it might be some cool merch at this thing. Yeah, and then, you know, probably stop by Spiteful, too. Yeah, let's... uh. Let's backtrack a little bit on Wednesday. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow. So the 11th, September 11th, Brad. Never forget. Never forget. <laughs> Let us also never forget that um, airplane. <laughs> the film? The movie? Air, no, airplane, <laughs> airplane fuel burns at a different temperature <laughs> than steel beams in a fucking skyscraper, Brad. <laughs> Airplane fuel don't burn that high, so that's all bullshit. <laughs> okay. Oh, but it's an evening with eight hearted. <laughs> Ed Hardy? <laughs> it's an eight hearted evening with bells. The worst transition. <laughs> it's an eight. It's on it's on nine eleven. Uh, an eight hearted evening with bells. So bells brewing is invading the beer temple. Okay. On nine eleven, and there'll be a. Uh, I feel uh, like invading is probably a. Poor word. They're good. They might be pouring. They're pouring more stuff for for the nine eleven oh, day. Yeah, shit. You're right, <laughs> man. <laughs> Damn you, uh, Oktoberfest. <laughs> um, uh, two hearted on cask, uh, two hearted twenty nineteen, and double two hearted. Okay. And then some surprises from Bells. Cool. Over at uh, the beer temple. Nice. Yeah. So that's Wednesday. Huh? Yeah. Is that all? Oh, one more thing. This weekend is the uh, Shy Sox Beer Festival. Oh, nice. So that's at Sox Park. That's one to four. Uh, VIP is $125. Whew. Yeah, you get to meet Frank Thomas. You get access to the uh, 
clubhouse. You get a tour of the stadium. You going? You're like I'm not going for twenty five dollars. You're there going. every day. I'll, I'll be there. But I don't know if it's going to be VIP. Okay. Um, but general admission is uh, forty five dollars. Okay. Cool. And that's forty brews. Yeah. I don't know if this is the right time to talk about my latest Sox Park experience, but I was there. I took uh, I took my Steins in. You know? Steins, yeah. yeah. I took Steins back to the park, you know, for like return f- return of the Steins. <laughs> oh, oh, not the- <laughs> these aren't working out for me. <laughs> I was like, no, I want a refund. I want yeah. a refund on these free Steins. I need them bigger. These aren't, <laughs> these aren't holding up beer. You told me they held two fucking cans, and you lied. No, I was, you know, because I wanted to party with the Steins, okay. and it's Friday night, fireworks night. Latino night, there was a Selena uh, imitator there. It was great. Okay. Oh, but anyway, we're in the uh, Craft Cave, one of like five bars there, and all the beer was like IPA and Hot Forward beers, March, April. Like, oh, no. Super, like local, super extended. Yeah, because you know, like, let me back up. A, a, a store that sells beer will tell you, hey, after 120 days, we're taking, we're giving this beer the fuck back. So it wasn't a, quite 120 days, but I mean, come on, right? It's in, it's in town beer. Why the fuck am I? Why is there an IPA from fucking March here? What right. the fuck? I feel like somebody told us a while ago that they didn't want to sell to Sox Park because Sox Park used to, or it, maybe it was McCormick. I don't remember which one. They buy all the beer at the beginning that's of why, the year. That's why Metro pulled out, and okay. then I think uh, the hop, the hot butcher guys chimed in and said that used to be the way. And okay. now it's more of an incremental, let's try to rotate That's it out good. kind okay. of thing. Um, and cheers to Hot Butcher because um, 816 was the date on that tavern cut. So I got four of those. Oh, okay, nice. But it, what led me to that was I'm flipping over these beers and all these beers. I'm like, yeah, it's fine for everyone else. But for Nick, he's Fuck not- that shit. No. <laughs> like, I, was, I was so upset. I was like, what's wrong with you guys? Um, yeah. Oh. Beer Fest on Saturday at 1 o'clock. Cool. All right. right. Uh, That's it for events, man. All right. We got a little bit of news. Let's get through this and we'll get out of here. Um, Half Acres uh, Far and Away Invitational, arguably the greatest collection of beers we saw in 2018 at the roof of the Harris Theater by Millennium Park, uh, won't be returning this year. How? Any reason? or? Yeah, apparently, like, it just doesn't fit their 12-month schedule of beer production. Like, so it's it's kind of a hype beast, like, um, one-off thing. It's like you, me and Brad enjoy some beers from Other Half or The Veil. Vale. Yeah. These are brews you can't get in Chicago, and these kegs are really expensive to acquire. So they're just kind of like, hey, you know, as fun as that thing was, it doesn't make sense. It fiscally doesn't make sense to do that all the time. Mm. You know, the effort behind it. You know, because yeah. half, half Acre is not the biggest growing town. It's, rel- it's it's a lot smaller than than you would imagine. You know. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So no far and away. That party was mean. That was that was might have been my favorite party last that year. That was good. Um, sketchbook announced. They talked about this on our episode pre before episode. Yeah, we were we were told on this and we couldn't. You know. Tell anyone, but Evanston, or not Evanston, Skokie. Skokie, location number two in Skokie. That'll be their second tap room, too. And we talked about a little bit during the show how, like, you know, Sketchbook was brewing at a Great Central, and how, you know, whether it's Sketchbook or, or Ravinia or Maple, Maplewood, they're all t- taking ownership of the beer they make. You know, they're like, we don't yeah, care so how much it costs. We just want to be in charge. So you're, you're going to see a lot of Sketchbook beer next year. Yeah. Uh, cheers to Eris. Uh, the Eris Brew House is up for landmark status from landmark.com. Oh, cool. So there's one of nine. They got a hidden water tower? <laughs> <laughs> uh, creative use of uh, hidden water tower. <laughs> no. they, their award is for um, adaptive use of space from uh, landmark.org. So we, we, we joked about this a lot from, from those guys. It's like, uh, you know, this is a 107-year-old building. Mm-hmm. It was a Masonic temple. And they converted it into the first brewery slash cidery in the city. So, you know, going through all those codes and making it happen. They also got a kitchen. You know, it's like it's this gorgeous space, and they, they revamped it. So uh, cheers to You got to go inside them. one of these times. Yeah. <laughs> I went and sat on the patio. Yeah. Uh, one more news, a little bit more news about Half Acre, man. Um, uh, there's a Half Acre co-founder, Maurizio Fiore. Uh, he's launching a, uh, an event space in uh west town it's gonna be called walden so uh it's uh him and a uh and a, a charlie trotter hmm. graduate that's cool yeah so they're doing a 300 person event space um near damon and walnut oh neat 
Yeah. 20 beers on tap. One of those beers will be this new brewery called uh, Midwest Brewery. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then I saw news about a new brewery that's... Mid- Midwest Coast Brewing, sorry. Midwest Coast Brewing. Yeah. A new brewery that's looking to open in LaGrange called Milk Money Brewing. <laughs> I like that. Uh, they are people who had a restaurant or they still have a restaurant in a neighboring suburb and now they're looking to do like a, a restaurant with a, I think it's a seven barrel system. So that could be pretty exciting. So you're talking Southwest. So you're talking... Uh, uh, Imperial Oak and um, um, Buckle Down, and yeah, uh, out that yeah, way. Even Five Rabbits out Southwest. Lagrange, and, and yeah. Now Lagrange, yeah. So we mentioned a lot of these suburb breweries need to have restaurant forward and then a brew pub, so or a brewery. So it makes yeah. sense. Could be cool. Right on. Milk money. All right, that will do it for this week's Chicago Beer Pass. We, we have went to like much. three things, Brad. I know. We have so much to say. <laughs> so, uh, Nick, where can people find you? Get in touch when we're not here. Right on, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at BRAD, Chicago Beer Pass, Chicago Beer Pass on Twitter, Instagram. We're always posting lots of stuff there, so check that out. And we'll be back next week with another episode. Take care. Cheers.